these days we don't really give a second thought about all those loyalty programs. You know, the cards you got in your wallet, those barcodes on your keychains. Well, ideas like that have to start somewhere, right? And maybe it was right here in Detroit. So we'll begin the story, let's say around 1976. Biggie man, well, you know, I just thought people would run a boogie and party. That's when Detroit got its first wacky FM rock morning guy. The guy who did all those crazy voices that he made up in his head over at WABX. I stumbled on Steve Dahl at ABX, and he was doing something that nobody had ever done. I didn't wake up without listening to Steve Dahl. You know, he was the one who started doing all those funny voices, doing all the funny skits. And the funny thing about Steve, he was doing these voices, right? And uh, you could tell it was Steve doing all the voices. George Beyer was just 20 years old, going to Wayne State and working at a gas station. And, well, he did some funny voices, too. yo -ho, I love. I'm used to babysit Sleepy while he does the grocery shopping. Soon Beyer turned up on the air, part-time with Dahl and talking like a pro wrestler at W4, another FM rock station. That's right. That's why they call you the Bruiser. They don't call me All the right. Bruiser for nothing. I started doing Dick the Bruiser because he, Steve needed a bodyguard in, in, in his... You know, in his radio world, he, he's becoming so popular, he needs a bodyguard. Well, he, who's he going to get for a bodyguard? I, I don't know, he's Dick the Bruises, wrestler from Detroit. Well, what does he do? I don't know what he does, Steve, but he talks like this. Well, when Steve Dahl left for another job in Chicago, Jim Johnson stepped in, playing straight man to Byers' characters, and thus became the famous J.J. and the Morning Crew. I was from East Detroit, Jim was from Redford. So why couldn't we talk to somebody from who's listening from Taylor? I'm sure they won't land on the freeway. However, it's a very strange sight to be driving down the Chrysler Freeway. You look up on the horizon, and there are three UFOs, or three UFOs reported so far at the Chrysler and 8 Mile. And that was a part of the success was the, the Detroitness of the show. This is Jackie Stewart for W4 Traffic. It didn't take long for things to heat up. In 1979, WRIF pulled out every stop in the books in the FM ratings war. Jim and George really started making it happen at, at W4, and it became very, very clear to us that that was really the missing piece of the radio station. I mean, we, we always had good morning shows, but we never really had that breakout show. ABC actually owned WRIF at the time, and, well, they also just happened to own Channel 7 as well. If you remember the We Got Who You Wanted campaign, right, where they paired up Bill Bonds and, and John Kelly and Marilyn Turner. But then they decided, wait a minute, if it worked for our TV stations, why can't this work for our radio stations? Really, in one day, uh, we brought in Karen Savelli, and we brought in J.J. and the Morning Crew, which was really the big deal. Ken Calvert and Steve Costan joined the team and thus began some very memorable promotions. W-R-I-F. It'll make you want It came out in the fall of 1979. Everybody was talking about that. It really had a big impact. They called the commercial The Mouth. Oh, you have a remarkable mouth. W-R-I-F is a remarkable radio station. Baby. It probably was the best radio ad in the history of radio ads. Meantime, over in Chicago, Steve Dahl was causing quite the stir, blowing up a bunch of disco records at a baseball game. The Bee Gees? Disco had us run, it looked like it was gonna take over the world and run the Aerosmiths and the Led Zeppelins right out of business. It didn't happen, of course, but it just was the right thing at the right time, and uh, boy, it just took off. With all that sudden disdain for disco, J.J. and the Morning Crew started their own special club. You know, everybody steals promotions. We thought this would be a good one to steal uh, here in Detroit. We've got at least one or two disco stations. Uh, so why not go on the attack? Well, we got to call it something. Okay, what are we going to call it? Well, let's get Detroit in it. Yeah, let's get Detroit in it. Let's get rockers in it. Detroit rockers that hate disco. D-R-T-E. No, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like anything. What are you going to do? Dread, it turned out to be. Detroit Rockers. He's engaged in the abolition of disco. Um, I think Georgie came up with the, um, with the card. Got to have your card. How can you be a card-carrying member if you don't have a card? Yeah, I think the Bruiser speaking. Yeah, this is fair warning. Fair warning? Yeah, this is the disco duck. Disco duck? Yeah, 
On morning radio, George Byers' bruiser was taking on really a life of its own, and soon, well, the real Dick Bruiser even came out to promote the station. We ain't just fooling around. No time for Bee Gees or John Travolta. We've had enough of that now. When we put together the Bruiser Band, which really turned out to be one of the greatest promotions ever. The Bruiser Band actually opened for a number of national acts with George Beyer singing parody songs, as you know, The Bruiser. JJ and the morning crew, Jim and George, were really, really driving the radio station, and, and there's, there's no doubt about it. The credo of radio is so goes your morning, so goes your radio station. Meanwhile, those dread cards were such a hit, they were being upgraded to gold dread cards with actual serial numbers on them. Somebody came up with a genius idea. I don't know who it was. Why don't we combine this promotion with our advertisers and offer people with these cards discounts at various retailers around town? It was great. You could go into Harmony House, which was the big record chain in those days, flash your Riff Gold card, and they would knock a buck off any album and we had the you know gold dread card stickers accepted here so then it kind of evolved to detroit rockers engage in the acquisition of discounts tens maybe hundreds of thousands of those dread cards actually circulated throughout metro detroit maybe there's one still in your wallet or one of your drawers somewhere a reminder how a crazy radio promotion actually worked its way into our pocketbooks and sure into our hearts as well now. 